committee's consideration and approval, and one for information only. Following the presentations of the action items, I will ask the committee if there are any questions and call for the vote. Once all action items have been presented and approved, if appropriate, I will make a motion to place these items on the board's consent docket agenda for final board approval at the Board of Directors, uh, Board of Regents meeting scheduled for later today, February 18, 2016. The first item listed on your agenda today for the committee's consideration is item B, the approval of the committee minutes for um, the August 20th, 2015 and November 19th, 2015 Academic and Student Success Committee meetings. Does anyone have any corrections? Do I hear a motion to approve these minutes as distributed? So moved. Is there a second? A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The minutes uh, for these meetings are hereby approved. Our next action item for the committee's consideration is item C, the approval of the College of Arts, University of Houston. Dr. Paula Short, Senior Vice Chancellor of Academic Affairs and Provost, will you please introduce these items? Thank you so much, uh, Regent Mendoza. As all of you know, Chancellor Couture has provided dynamic and visionary leadership here at the University of Houston in establishing three major areas of uh, strength for the University of Houston. Those areas, as you know, are health, energy, and the arts. And acting on President Couture's vision of the arts, as well as the advice and recommendations issued over the past two years by an arts task force, a committee on the feasibility of a College of the Arts, and most recently, a College of the Arts Advisory Committee, I bring before you a proposal to reorganize existing performance and visual arts programs uh, and units at the University of Houston, currently housed in the College of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences into a College of the Arts. This integrated college that we're proposing is consistent with the University of Houston and the University of Houston Systems of Missions. The College of the Arts will be a nationally competitive and globally significant entity while providing a diverse body of students in the metropolitan Houston area expanded access to a current and relevant arts education program in a real world environment in the fourth largest city, which is Houston. I've invited Dr. Andrew Davis, who is the director of the Morris School of Music and who has been leading the planning process for a new College of the Arts to give you more detail about what we're proposing. Dr. Short, thank you. It's great to be here. And it's great to see all of you. <clears throat> the proposal in front of you is for a College of Visual and Performing Arts to be called a College of the Arts uh, that includes four degree granting units and three non-degree granting units. The degree granting units would include the School of Music, the School of Art, and the School of Theater and Dance, as well as the Master of Arts in Arts Leadership Program. This is an interdepartmental graduate program in arts management under the supervision of the dean. The non-degree granting programs or units would include the Blaffer Art Museum, the Cynthia Woods Mitchell Center for the Arts, and the Center for Arts Leadership. Uh, let me talk for a minute on the financial side of the proposal. Uh, the present units that will comprise, <clears throat> sorry, the present units that will comprise the College of the Arts are financially viable, and the reorganization can be achieved largely through a reallocation of existing financial and human resources, uh, which we are, uh, we are confident will have a positive impact on the efficiency and the effectiveness of our operations. There is a financial pro forma attached to the proposal that shows the present financial situation in more detail. I know you've reviewed this. I'll uh, summarize it for you. Uh, the, uh, the pro forma shows existing revenues uh, exceeding existing expenses. Revenues are $17.3 million roughly. Expenses are roughly $16.9 million. On the revenue side, uh, that includes state formula funding, revenue from tuition and fees, sales and service income, and income on the endowment. On the expense side, it includes all ongoing personnel expenses, 
as well as maintenance and operations expenses. Uh, the latter, uh, the non-personnel side of the expenses, were computed uh, by looking at historical averages from the last five fiscal years. Uh, there's a note at the bottom uh, of the pro forma. Uh, I, I'd like to clarify that. Uh, uh, this is footnote one. Uh, this reads, the pro forma is projecting modest enrollment growth. If you look at the very top section of the pro forma, you can see those numbers uh, increasing incrementally. Uh, this is simply enrollment uh, growth up to the level that can be accommodated in the existing programs with existing personnel in existing facilities, and those numbers were arrived at uh, in uh, detailed discussions with the directors of all of the respective programs. Uh, let me say a little now on the, uh, the mission uh, and the potential impact of a College of the Arts at the University of Houston. Uh, we think this is a unique and a critically important opportunity for the university to make a significant local, statewide, national, and international impact. <clears throat> Our programming in the arts and arts education through the College of the Arts will make a major cultural, economic, and quality of life impact on the city of Houston. The visibility associated with a college will positively impact the recruiting of the top arts students nationwide. It will allow us leverage to recruit the top students nationwide in a very competitive environment. And the long range strategic planning and leadership that the college will enable will positively uh, impact our arts and arts education programming our community engagement and community partnerships, and our responsible and effective use of our financial resources. Uh, in fact, we have already elevated our national presence in the arts as part of the focus on planning for a potential College of the Arts. Uh, that is to say, in July 2015, the University of Houston accepted an invitation to join 31 other national research institutions, only four of which are in the South and only one of which is in the Southwest, uh, as a partner in the National Alliance for the Arts in Research Universities. This is an innovative organization focused on the role of the performing and visual arts in a major research institution such as this one. The organization is very interested in issues such as interdisciplinary programming, cooperative programming, community engagement, uh, and the like. Uh, so, uh, with the College of the Arts on its campus, uh, the University of Houston uh, has the opportunity to truly make itself one of the nation's leading arts destinations in 21st century higher education. I believe uh, very strongly, I'll, I will add, that the city of Houston, which I always uh, refer to as the great metropolis for 21st century America, uh, and indeed, it is one of the most desirable arts destinations for both practitioners and audiences nationwide. I believe that the city of Houston needs a great school of the arts for the 21st century in the same way that places like Philadelphia, New York, Chicago, Los Angeles needed their great schools of the arts as well in the 19th and the 20th centuries. The arts faculty on the campus are fully behind this effort. And in fact, the city of Houston is fully behind this effort. And when we have with us today to support the proposal for a College of the Arts and to attest to its importance, three distinguished members of the city's arts and cultural communities. These uh, members represent the breadth of the professional community that makes Houston's arts and cultural scenes so strong. I have discussed with each of them individually the College of the Arts initiative and the motivations behind it. And I would like to ask each of them now to introduce themselves and say a brief word on our behalf. Let's begin with uh, Mark Hansen. Good afternoon. I'm Mark Hansen, the Executive Director and CEO of the Houston Symphony. And I'm honored to represent the Houston Symphony family today, a family that includes many more school faculty members within our orchestra ranks and a growing number of University of Houston graduates serving in the administrative ranks of our organization. We are very, very excited about the creation of a University of Houston College of the Arts, combining the incredible assets that are the School of Music, School of Art, School of Theater and Dance, as well as the Master of Arts program and Arts Leadership, the Blaffer Art Museum, and the Cynthia Woods Mitchell Center for the Arts and the Center for Arts Leadership, under the umbrella of a new College of the Arts, will bring forth new collaborative opportunities, both within the university and throughout the Houston region. 
with leadership that brings a bold, ambitious, and inclusive vision for the new college and understands the power of capturing ideas and input from students, <coughs> faculty, community partners, and alumni, the College of the Arts will succeed in raising the local, national, and international profile of its programs and the University of Houston as a whole. It will succeed in attracting an even higher caliber of students and faculty. It will succeed in generating a larger audience and donor base throughout our community. And it will succeed in opening up new collaborative opportunities between the College of the Arts and Houston's dynamic and growing arts and cultural sector. The Houston Symphony applauds the University of Houston for considering the creation of a new College of the Arts. And we very much look forward to building ever closer ties between our institutions and the entire community. Thank you very much. Mark, thank, thank you. you very much. Let's continue with uh, Dean Gladden. Good afternoon. I'm Dean Gladden, Managing Director of the Alley Theater. We had the privilege of uh, being on campus all of last year and really worked firsthand with the theater department here. And it was a terrific experience. And we uh, want to thank you all for helping make that possible. The one of the great things of having a uh, separate school is the fact that I think you can strengthen and pay more attention to kind of to uh, the quality of each of these schools. And, and we're looking forward to um, upgrading the theater department and working with the theater department because we think it's a great resource. We hire a lot of uh, University of Houston graduates and the stronger that program is, the, str the better for us. So we're looking forward to working with you in the future in strengthening this program, making it one of the great programs in the country. Thank you. Thank you. Dean, thank you. And we'll continue with uh, Gwen Goff. Good morning. Good morning. President Couture, Renaud. Chairman Petito, Tillman, for assembled members of the Board of Regents, uh, faculty, staff, members, and guests, I'm very honored to be here today to speak on behalf of the College of the Arts. My name is Gwen Goff. In 2013, I retired after 43 years in the arts community here in uh, Houston, 25 years at the Museum of Fine Art Houston, and 18 years at uh, the Corcoran Gallery and School of Art in Washington, D.C., with a two-year hiatus to get an MBA from Wharton. I, um, since my retirement, I was honored to be a fellow for the Center for Houston's Future to conduct a study on arts and cultural heritage in Houston and the nine surrounding counties. I have um, served, I'm currently serving on the Blaffer Museum Board and I currently work as the Chief Investment Officer of the Brown Foundation. I will say that as the Chief Investment Officer, I'm not on the grant giving side. So <laughs> you're on your own there. <laughs> but um, I, so I'm here today as an avid and dedicated supporter of the arts. Congratulations to all of you for considering the establishment of a College of the Arts. You have the building blocks here. Faculty, staff, programs, alumni, students, and leadership. The leaders that I have come to know uh, here at the University of Houston in the Arts pro Program include Claudia at the Blaffer, Rex in the Art School of Arts, uh, Florette in the Arts Leadership Program, uh, Sixto uh, in his program, Karen, and uh, many more. I apologize if I forgot one of you. <laughs> um, I was honored to work with Peter Marzio for eight years in Washington, D.C., and 25 years here in Houston. He and I together became uh, a team that created the Museum of Fine Art Houston as a place for all people. I think you now have the leader in Andrew Davis, 
to take on that mantle and become the place for all people in the arts here at the University of Houston. Um, just like your Krugers have brought national attention, the College of Arts will bring national, local, national, and international attention to the University of Houston. Um, I noticed in the audit that you um, audit the football attendance. Looking forward to seeing the audit on the arts attendance. <laughs> You are here because you know the strengths of this community, and this community stands behind you. Um, you can unite and support, and we will all be there with you to support the College of the Arts. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you very much. Gwen, thank you. Thank you for being here. Uh, <clears throat> that uh, concludes the presentation. Uh, Mark, Dean, uh, Gwen, thank you for being uh, with us today. Let me thank my entire College of the Arts team, many of whom joined us today over on the side. Let me especially thank Provost Short, who I've worked so closely with for several months now on this effort. Uh, it's been a great partnership. And let me thank uh, President Couture for your visionary leadership of this campus. And I appreciate the support and the leadership of this body as well. It's great to be here. Thank you very much. And so with that, we um, move approval of the proposal for the College of the Arts. And we'll be happy, happy to answer any further questions. Or any entertain, uh, entertain any further comments the committee would like to make. Thank you. Questions, comments? None? If we don't have questions, then I would be very pleased to put forth the motion for approval of this recommendation. I know that we're rushed for time, but I just must stop and agree in, uh, with Andrew Davis that we must thank uh, our provost, Dr. Paula Short, for a very deliberate process and her diligence and very thoughtful review of what other universities they have studied, what our peer universities are doing as they approach the arts. They have studied the uh, options within our own structure to determine what is optimal for us. I have <clears throat> had the privilege of being in conversations about the opportunities for student success, for our faculty enthusiasm and preparedness for this. And I think we all should take note of the fact that Houston has over 12,000 theater seats in the downtown district. That's second only to New York. The opportunity for students to find Houston one of the most attractive places to study in because of the great university environments and their access to nationally recognized and world recognized uh, arts leaders like we've just heard and we can't thank enough uh, Mark Hansen, Dean Gladden, and uh, Gwen Goff for their advice and their support and helping to build the kind of climate in our city that makes this such an exciting collaboration. So. I'm very honored to uh, see this project that's been going on for a couple of years come to a well thought out conclusion. Very right. good. Thank you very much. So there's a motion on the floor. Second? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Very good, very good. Mark, um, Dean, and uh, Gwen, I personally want to thank the three of y'all for coming in. I know how important y'all have been to the city of Houston, and it makes me proud for y'all to be part of our community and to lead our arts. So thank you all very much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to come up here today. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Did, you, you, would y'all like to stand up just so that we can recognize you? Please stand. We'd love to see y'all. Stand up. Yay. Thank you all very much for coming also. Yeah, thank you. All right, the next approval item is item E, the approval of the University of Houston Victoria honorary degree. Dr. Short, will you please introduce this item? Thank you, Regent Mendoza. Pursuant to the Board of Regents Policy 2102 and UH System Administrative Memorandum or SAM 06.A.04, 
The University of Houston, Victoria is requesting your approval to offer an honorary degree to an individual who has made significant contributions to the university and to the community. The individual that they wish to recognize with an honorary degree is Mr. Bing Shen Wu. He is an accomplished and highly regarded business entrepreneur in the country of China. At the age of 50, Mr. Wu created a pharmaceutical company for traditional medicine, curing himself of cancer with their products and becoming in the process one of the 50th wealthiest, wealthiest businessmen in the country of China. He's affiliated with several academic initiatives in Beijing and other Chinese cities, and he's published two important books on economics, Consumption and Management, New Directions and Applications in 2011, and New Theory on Leadership Management Science in 2013. He is a member of our own uh, prestigious Ezekiel W. Co uh, Cullen Society. He has demonstrated his philanthropic commitment to public higher education in Texas through subs a substantial gift of $600,000 to the University of Houston, Victoria. And that gift has helped to expand their international reach of their School of Business Administration. His gifts have led to the establishment of the Wu Fung Center for International Business at uh, UHV, named for him and his wife, uh, and they have established outreach offices in the greater Houston and Victoria area. His philanthropic um, gifts have allowed the University of Houston, Victoria to offer sizable scholarships to 51 students who spend two weeks learning about business culture in study abroad trips to the People's Republic of China. He also serves as the School of Business Administration's exec executive in residence. Uh, they have followed our established pro process uh, in the uh, nomination and the review of this candidate at the University of Houston, uh, and I move approval of uh, Mr. Wu to receive the honorary doctorate at the University of Houston, Victoria. Thank you. Are there any <coughs> questions or comments? I know they put a bio um, also here for us. Any? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we got the same thing. You right. All righty. Yeah. If none, may I hear a motion to approve? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? This item is hereby approved. Thank you, Dr. Short. Sure. Uh, this concludes the presentation <coughs> and approvals of two action items today. Item C, the UH College of the Arts, approved by the committee, will be discussed by the full board. But may I have a motion to place our second action item, the approval of the University of Houston Victoria honorary degree, on the board's consent docket agenda. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? This item approved by the committee will be placed on the Board of Regents consent docket agenda for final board approval at our board meeting held later today. The last agenda item to be presented today will be the inform for information only. Item E, the presentation of the University of Houston System 2015-2016 progress cards. Did Chancellor Couture come back in? She has not made it back yet. Okay. She's going to do the presentation of these items. It is her item. Go oh, wait. Someone's going to go get her. He went, sorry, he went to go get her. So. So give us a quick second, if you will, please. Do you have the paperwork? I'll, I'll do it for her. <laughs> We're waiting on her. She has her paper. Should have those, it ready. Those cards are on the yeah, right. iPad. Page 15. I think I'm going to let her handle this. Here she comes. Thank you. President Couture, it's all yours. <laughs> Thank you. you all ready for the conference report. Time, yes, I was about to take was over your job. Oh. <laughs> we were waiting. We were waiting. I apologize. <laughs> I just had to walk out to congratulate okay. our faculty and the staff. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely worth it. Worth the wait. Yes. Um, <clears throat> so this is uh, our 2015 accountability report. And uh, just half of, part of the press, basically we started this with the 2007, a year before I came as the base number. 
And then each year we have on given measures which were approved by the board early on. You can see whether um, we are making progress or we are not making progress. So the first thing that will come uh, about midway into the report is the system report card. So we have one system report card, and after that we have um, definitions are on the other side, so you can just see here, and then definition you will find on the other side here, so there are no confusions. Most of the time, the definitions that are taken are really um, national definitions, where national definitions are not there. We have gone to state definitions, or otherwise they are from our institutional research, so the units do not control the, the data. They, they are all verified. In, in terms of uh, the presentation of it, I'm just saying it for the benefit of new regions particularly. There are four different components here. One is the national competitiveness, then is the student access and success. In that piece of student access and success, the measures that are here, you will find them in every university's card because we believe our students' uh, access and success all across our, our campuses need to be um, uh, measured on the same variables. Then we have community advancement and then competitive resources. And uh, rather than going through every single one of them, I'll just highlight a few because what you will see here is increase, decrease, so given in red and green. From last year is if there has been an increase, you will see in the cell of all greens. And if there has been a decrease from last year, you will see that red. And then in terms of from base year, which is base year being 2007, Everything that is green, you'll see is a green or otherwise red. Now, a few of the variables that are showing red have to do with the economy, and uh, such as uh, there's a slight uh, drop you will see in terms of the total um, uh, annual giving, not a, not a whole lot, but just a slight drop. You will also notice there is something in terms of federal research expenditures. There are, um, there's a drop from last year. And that drop is uh, based on several accounting things, uh, but our awards and our um, overall proposals, everything is, is, is going very well. So in general, as you can see, we are doing very good in terms of total enrollment. Now we are 70,024 <laughs> students um, in our system. So I just want to make sure we can always now remember the days, easy to remember number, we are, we are serving 70,000 students here. Um, among all our universities. And uh, with the students, exception of the students who are physically in Victoria, actually all of these students are being served in Greater Houston because Victoria has a huge presence in Greater Houston. Total degrees awarded have, you can see that have gone up quite significantly from, uh, from the base year to now you can see, and so figure to remember is that we are graduating more than 15,000 students per year from our system. In terms of uh, the students that are from the underserved um, uh, populations, you can see a significant increase there as well. Number of degrees awarded to underserved students has also grown up almost double, as well as the number of degrees awarded in critical fields from the base year 12, 1271, and it is now at 3341. So these are the areas that are important to the state, important to us, important to Houston. Our, um, there are two types of annual giving that we notice here, because, and the reason for us, that is because one is a national requirement and one is basically the, the, on, on the basis of which you will notice your capital campaign. So therefore, we want to make sure we start reporting both now. One is a cash basis and one is new commitments that includes cash as well as pledges. And then total endowment, which you can see now, is almost 800 Millions. So uh, these are some numbers that will be helpful in wherever you are speaking on behalf of the University of Houston. And then if you go to the next page, I'll go ahead and present the University of Houston as well. And uh, after that, we'll have somebody from campuses come and, and uh, give it just a very quick um, summary, not on every topic. Because University of Houston is a research university, you will notice now that there are several more um, measures that we have for being nationally competitive. And these include our research expenditures, but they also include our citations, which are important to measure the social sciences and humanities faculty. And what that means is that you can write a chapter or write an article and publish it, no big deal, because sometimes some articles may be read only by 100 people. 
But the way the citation measure works is not how many you published, but how many people actually used your publication and referred them in their own publication for future research. So in other words, you are building the depth of, of uh, inquiry in that particular discipline. And then we also have doctorate and postdoctoral, uh, doctorates awarded and postdoctoral appointees. You will see a significant increase from 239 PhD students to 335 per year now. We'll continue to drive that number up because as a research, as a research university, that, that's one of the important missions about your doctoral training and you're preparing for talent and professors for future. Then you will see under 2A, these are the UH system. These are common five measures across all campuses. Your student success, which we measure in terms of enrollment for this campus, for University of Houston, it has gone up from 34,663 in 2007, and now we are at 42,704. And, and by the way, just because we won in Peach Bowl, we had a great, you know, Peach Bowl win uh, has brought a lot of uh, interest in University of Houston. Our freshman applications are up tremendously, mm -hmm. and we haven't really started with the transfer applications yet, but I am sure that that's what will happen. Last night, uh, Regent Agrawal was very, was very generous in hosting a UH Day uh, in, in a part of Houston here. It's called UH Day at India House. And they were just incredible, completely sold out event. And uh, people were just very nervous. The students and parents are asking, can I get into the University of Houston? I mean, it was just really refreshing. Uh, we have transfer retention rate, transfer graduation rate that we monitor, and everywhere we just have to constantly keep on make progress. This is progress report. We don't say that this is the goal and this is what you have to achieve, but we just want to make sure you are progressing so that you know overall the institution in all fields is getting better. Then we have the, 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 the one area, which is the 2AE, just because that's so red from last year, I just thought I'll point that out. And that is um, an indicator which is about satisfaction. And it took a dip simply because there was a lot of controversy. That was the year when we had a lot of controversy re regarding a student fee and, and stadium construction. And there's just a lot of public uh, negative commenting as well. But otherwise, I think um, we are where most major universities are. But we'll drive this number up. And then you have UH specific measures in 2B. And that includes with FTIC retention rate. Now that our all campuses have FTICs, after you know four years of performance, some of these measures will move up into the system card. We also look at the freshman acceptance rate, which means if 100 people apply, how many you end up admitting. So you can see we used to take 77% here, and now it is 60%. This year, this number may drop just because we have more applications. And the uh, median SAT that we look at it used to be 1055 in 2007. At this point, it's 1150, yeah, one yeah. of the fastest rises in the nation in terms of the, the qu quality of students who are now considering University mm -hmm. of Houston as not their choice, last choice, but their first choice. And the course completion rate has been a very important uh, variable for coordinating board because they believe that if you're not completing your courses that you take, then obviously, number one, you are wasting your money. But the second time, second thing is that you're delaying your, your uh, graduation. And you can see that we have really done quite well that there. So from 88% it used to be, we are at almost 97% course completion rate. Community advancement, there are several things here. Um, and. Uh, you know, we basically look at it as a very difficult measure. Nationally, it doesn't matter in terms of rankings and all. But we believe our commitment to community really speaks uh, volumes to us that we should have something in here. But right now, we are working in a very strong way with our neighborhood um, uh, partnership forum. For 18 months, we have been at it. And uh, probably by May time, we will be able to give you, um, you know, a, a full plan as to what we intend to do in, in our immediate neighborhood. But I always keep saying the University of Houston, uh, now that, that we have transformed ourselves, that it's time that we start looking and helping communities transform themselves. Mm -hmm. So we have become a, a, a outward looking in our reach, and uh, our neighborhood project is going to be an extension of that commitment. Then in terms of athletics, um, uh, I think uh, I, I'm not paying that much attention to 4B, which is total team sports win. I mean, we won the Peach Bowl. I mean, I mean, uh, 
I mean, there were a lot of coaches in transition, I must say that, in, uh, because I have every single piece, people have given me very serious explanation as to why the number is red. I mean, no, nothing gets unnoticed. And, and then you have local national recognition and then competitive resources. It's important to note in competitive resources, the first one, which is 6A, is the total state appropriations per FTE student. And uh, if you look at it from 2007, it used to be 66.95 per student. And this last year, it was 63.68. So total state appropriations for per student has really declined. And you're going to see some more in our tuition presentation. In terms of endowment, you can, you know, it's a number you can see in annual giving. Um, our annual giving, the number that actually um, counts, and that one becomes the new commitments, because that's what you count in your capital campaign. And that means that we, um, we, we actually have done quite well raising it from 48 to 119, 120 million this year. And I think uh, economy did have some uh, influence on it, but still I think we have performed rather well. And annual alumni giving rate, we have driven it up from 5% to, to 13%. And at 13%, we are actually in, in the very solid category um, of the very top institutions in terms of uh, public universities. Privates have a lot more engagement rate. There are some publics that have higher, much higher than 12%, but we are very comfortable and actually doing much better than others in, on that particular uh, thing. Th th this is only for freshmen, by the way, the except alumni giving rate. So it does not include here the graduates, uh, graduated students who came for graduate studies giving rate because we look at the US News and World Report measure and that is only about undergraduate students in here. So with that, I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, I just think numbers, uh, when you, you measure something, you will make sure that you are improving it. I, I'm, I'm big on this, so therefore this is our accountability report. And um, you know, it has been touted several times in the state legislature where um, senators and, and representatives have actually used the report to say, you know, if University of Houston can do this, why can't you do this? And I know it's not easy because the definitions, generally we get into the academic debates about definitions, but we have them, and it's working very well for us. So with that, I'm going to just invite our... Um, can I ask a question real quick? Uh, two things. The uh, residential on campus right. is, uh, you know, we've developed certain on-campus housing. As others develop perimeter uh, student housing, do we get to count that in our, in our formula, or is that not counted? So there is a specific definition who you can count. Uh, you got to have your own programming in those peripheral, uh, you know, residential homes. So every single time, Dr. Walker looks at it to see what, if we, ha we have no control over students who are living there, in, in no way we enrich their experience, then we cannot count them but there are some conditions under which we can count. Yeah, I would say that with, we, we're trying to encourage uh, more, you know, yes, more yes. of that uh, because that helps you know, further our cause and, and it doesn't cost us anything. So if there's a way to count those and, and, and under your definition, maybe we can provide them with some tools that would allow us to count those in our overall count, we ought to consider that. Yes. Uh, and secondly, in the, uh, the alumni, undergraduate alumni giving back isn't in 13 percent isn't that doesn't that get us in the, in the area for tier one i mean doesn't yes. that hit the yes, mark it is congratulations it is yes it's it's very good but we'll still keep on driving it we want 20 percent <laughs> I mean, we're never happy Mendoza, we're good. I have a question and comment uh, can we ask a u.s world and needs report to include uh, donations by graduate students because a lot of people like you me and Suresh will be eliminated, are being right. eliminated. I don't think it's fair for them to not okay. include. Can we? So they them? are counted in your in giving in the to total dollars. It's just they are not counted in percentage. And, and that's OK. You know, there are many things we count only for undergraduates. But the total cash amount, which is your gift is counted, and anything you will give in future, which I know you will give big dollars in future too, <laughs> it will all be counted here. I just want to make sure. I'm not talking about me. I think uh, I'm talking about U.S. World and Needs Report should have a, uh, another category. I'm thinking outside the box. I think we should tell them to improve their, uh, <laughs> I guess, uh, analysis right. system, or uh, I think we should recommend to them. Okay. Thank you. 
quick question? Yeah, absolutely. What were some of the bullet points on the senior satisfaction dip? Did they identify specific right. things? Uh, so this is, uh, we, we have to uh, dissect it, but there's a, we only look at here as one question, which is for, from the seniors as to uh, whether your experience was satisfactory at the university. They don't give qualitative comments, which we have internal survey through which we, we do that, uh, and we can do that. But this from year to year variation really depends on if there's something really going on that your students just are really irritated about. I mean, sometimes it could be just parking, you know, if you don't have it. But we, there are, in that survey, which is a national survey, there are many <coughs> academic pieces and many very, very good pieces of information. So our staff dissects all of those, and then they go to those places where we need to make a critical improvement. So it's just the explanation is uh, for those that, that kind of a huge dip, but even without that, we look at it whether they were happy with their residential experience, they're happy with their food, whether they're happy with their classes, whether they got a seat in the, in the, in the class, whether faculty had interaction with them, they found faculty advisor accessible. I mean, there's just a lot of variables in there. Yeah. I think everyone's in formal surveys is that it would just be parking. That's probably the only thing I ever hear. I know. That's the only criticism I would get from. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. you want to bring up one of the, the next Thank presents? you. Yes. Um, I'll just like to call upon uh, downtown, UH downtown. And as Dr. Olivas is coming up here, just uh, because um, he's new to you, uh, this is Dr. Michael Olivas uh, serving as the interim president for UH Downtown. Thank you, Dr. Olivas. Thank you very much, and thank you for the confidence that you showed in, in appointing me to this position. I will try and leave it an even better place than I have found it. And I've been there two weeks, just for the record. <laughs> <laughs> Nonetheless, I'm happy to embrace not only the institutional commitment, but the progress that we've made over time. And at the board's um, instruction several years ago, we began a process of trying to reconstitute ourselves, not only to be easy to get into, but not so easy to leave. That is, uh, we had a lot of part-time students who came through, especially transfer students. Um, these helped inflate the numbers, but we weren't satisfied with the academic progress and the achievement of these students, uh, because uh, at the end of the day, we want to produce graduates and to play our share in the future that is Houston. And we believe that we've done so. While the numbers uh, uh, can always be improved, I think that the bottom line is that we have realigned our efforts with the faculty and the staff and with the uh, cooperation of, of the various system and other uh, leadership to, uh, to realign ourselves in a way that uh, will dedicate more resources to students, providing more advising, choosing students more carefully and trying to uh, graduate them in a timely fashion. Um, we have, over the years, had a, a very clear institutional ethos. That is, we admitted full -time, uh, many part-time students, many first-generation students, many immigrant students, including a substantial number of undocumented students, uh, many students of color, and we've become a very robust uh, HSI all of these are the future of Houston, and in fact, the future of the United States. And we think that uh, what we have begun to show is that these students can achieve when given the proper resources and attention. And when we've realigned ourselves, we believe, to try and serve their interests better, as well as our own institutional interests. Uh, I know that there's a lot of moving parts here, and I'd be very pleased to uh, answer any specific questions that you have, uh, Regents, Chancellor Couture, and um, uh, I stand ready to, uh, to listen and learn. Thank you. I just have a pretty basic question on how we have to do accounting. Do we have any way to note those, those students who come in and, and were never intended to finish a degree? And I guess this comes from my personal experience in knowing mm -hmm. 
For example, my niece who graduated out of state, she comes to Texas, needs one accounting course to sit for the CPA exam, and she was very happy to get that course. I mean, certainly that is not, I mean, that's performing a wonderful service, and we should be there. But is that counting is that? against us? We have a way to not Well, it, it doesn't really that. account against us. In fact, it counts for us. Uh, okay. there, there are many reasons students enter college. We would like to attract more full-time, first-time freshmen, of course. We'd like to accept our share of transfer students who are serious academic transferees uh, who will do well and ultimately graduate. And if it turns out that students move away from us to move to other components of the University of Houston system, we will claim our fair share of the progress that they've made. There's lots of photographs you can take of students in their trajectory, and we would like to serve them while we have them the best we can. That may mean some just need to take a course or two or a certification. Uh, that, of course, is going to happen. We're doing that with our MBA program now, which we've grown to meet a need that wasn't there before. But uh, uh, while it may not count in the metrics, these metrics are only one piece of the, the larger story. Uh, we certainly have our fair share of those, as do all of the campuses. We would like to have more full-time, first-time freshmen who come and stay and graduate in a reasonable time, and we're confident that those numbers are going to increase. So, um, uh, Regent Madison, there are three pieces of metrics that you have to look in order to get a full picture of where things count. Students get counted one of those three places, so I always look at all three. One is the six-year graduation rate, and that's where your first time, a freshman, full-time, who are starting, that's the only, they get counted there. So if you lose, if a freshman comes and you lose a freshman after one semester, you get counted for that in a negative way, even though that, that student may go transfer across the street and may graduate from there in time. So, so you have to look at it, though, whether you, you, you took the right students and held them and helped them graduate. Then second one is transfer retention rate. And that means the students, anybody who transfers, and are you getting them, retaining them, and getting them to graduate or transfer graduation rate? Third piece is the total number of degrees awarded. That one will count anybody who, at any point in time they come for whatever number of credits and they graduate. So the only people who miss out in all of this is those who will take just one course, because, but their degree is coming from somewhere else. They don't get counted. The only way we know that they are here is from the financials and from the student credit hours. And there are a lot of flaws in this. State has been in conversation. How do we capture right, rightly, and there has been a lot of conversation at national level, how do we capture the contribution of the universities? Because none of these graduation rates really capture everything. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. I have one other question. How, yes, how are Mendoza. the the young, the kids that are coming straight out of high school now with their associate's degrees, how do they, so they don't come in to us as freshmen, right? Well, how, how in, in the technical counted? sense, they don't come as freshmen, but the term freshman itself is is no longer the case. I've got a, a nephew who's on the seven-year plan yeah. right now, um, uh, and Uncle Michael <laughs> and Aunt Tina are paying part of that uh, right now. Thank um, you for that. <laughs> uh, the, the, the cooperation uh, programs that we have where students come with advanced credit, advanced placement, uh, uh, early uh, cooperative education programs, uh, and so forth, uh, mean they come in with a slightly different count, but they'll still be full-time, full first-time freshmen okay. in, the in the technical kind of sense. Um, the, these are, are good programs, but they also depend upon the quality of the, the area high schools. And some high schools in the, in the states across the districts uh, are better at these. And, and you can almost anticipate which schools they would be, schools in wealthier parts of town and so forth. That's why I really have come to admire, as I know uh, regents have over the years, the mission of the downtown, uh, right. the University of Houston downtown, because we take them as we find them and we try and move them ahead. And the real value is how you add value to that student's portfolio. If you find them here, if you find them at a certain level and you move them on a little bit, wonderful and God bless you. If you find them back here and move them farther along, that is where the real work comes. And I believe that that's what we do in a, in a unique fashion. I do. Thank you very much. Do we have any further questions? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. I would draw your attention to the personal item today of, of uh, signing me up formally. <laughs> Thank, you very Thank, you. Thank you for being here. I'd like to call upon President Staples from Clear Lake.
Chair Mendoza, members of the board, uh, let me draw your attention. All the numbers are important on this uh, chart, but in my opinion, some numbers are more important than others. If our overarching goal is student success, and in my opinion, it absolutely is, let me uh, highlight a few numbers uh, on this chart. Basically, you look at recruitment, retention, and graduation. You recruit the students, you retain them, and hopefully then you graduate them. If you look at uh, the item that is 2BH, 2BH is course completion rates. So what percentage of your students that actually start a course finish a course? Uh, that's very important because if they don't complete the courses, they're not going to be retained. And so you can see for UH Clear Lake, uh, our percentage is 94.5%. You then get to retention. And so if you go to 2AB, uh, you have the transfer retention rate for the first year. And for us in the far right column uh, for the latest year, you can see that it's 83%. Uh, so that's year to year. So those students that were in the fall, one year, are they still there fall the next year? For us, the data on this chart is still reflecting us as an upper level university. <laughs> because even though we admitted our first freshman class of, in fall of 14, we're only in the second year this year, uh, academic year being a four year institution. Second factor related to retention is if you look down at 2BA, uh, this is the Hispanic transfer retention rate for first year. And you can see that it's 82.8%. So basically our transfer retention rate for the entire university and our transfer retention rate for one of our fastest growing student segments, Hispanic students at the undergraduate level, uh, is virtually the same. And so we would be very concerned if those percentages uh, were significantly different. Uh, Another factor that's very important that I would just mention is 2BE. 2BE is the total semester credit hours that we generate. Uh, that's important because credit hours are the driver of revenue. It drives basically your state appropriations in terms of formula funding that we get from the state every two years. And it also drives obviously the revenue we generate from tuition and fees. So if you're recruiting and retaining students and they're completing courses, then you're going to generate more semester credit hours, which have significant revenue implications. Let me take you very quickly to 2AD, 2AD, total degrees awarded. This gets uh, to Chancellor Couture's point a minute ago. Uh, for the most recent period, uh, we awarded over 2,500 degrees. And so, that's the end point, so to speak, as they become alumni of the institution. So it's really about recruitment, retention, all the way to graduation. You can see under 2AA, uh, our total enrollment now is uh, 8,906 students. Uh, part of that obviously due to our transition from an upper level uh, to, to a four-year institution. Very quickly, what are we concerned about? I'll, I'll look at two of them. Uh, we're concerned about 2AC, which is transfer graduation rate, four years. It's four years for an upper level. It's six years for a, a four-year institution, as well as 2BB, the Hispanic transfer graduation rate. What you'll note in both of those is they have declined. As we've dug into the data, what we found is that there are students who start out as full-time students. And for various reasons, they don't stay full-time students. Either they find out they cannot handle the load they signed up for, i.e. most of our students in this chart basically are community college transfer students as an upper-level institution. Or they're trying to balance really work and school and they signed up for more than they can handle. That's not the good news. The good news, though, is that if you look at the retention data, they're still in the institution. They're just going to take a little bit longer to get their degree. So if the retention numbers were declining, we would be more concerned. What we've implemented 
is an early alert system. So our faculty is work, are working with our student success center to identify students who are having difficulty, where they can get help, hopefully before they actually end up uh, dropping the course. So the retention figures, as the chancellor would say, we can always get better, and we will. Uh, but we are seeing students that are signing up for more courses than the, they can really handle. So between the advising system we have, between the early alert system we have, uh, we think we can give them better advice. We also have a whole set of activities for student success, whether it's a math center, a writing center, a counseling center, a career center, to really help our students get to that ultimate goal, which is obviously graduation. The last one I'll point to and, and be done is 2BF. 2BF is something I watch every year, and it's the percent of our graduating students who would recommend UH Clear Lake to family and friends. And if you go to that column for the most recent time, the overall percentage is 92%. Uh, basically, the best advertising for a university is word of mouth. Yeah. Uh, we can have billboards, we can have print publications and so forth, social media, uh, but if someone is telling somebody else that UH Clear Lake is a good place to go, that will trump all advertising every time. So the word of mouth is good. Uh, we hope to grow the 92%. Uh, we're pleased with it, but as always, it can get better. Thank you all very much. Thank, Thank you very you much. Go. So what, questions? What, Regent Just Madison. one. So what is the um, median SAT for your freshmen this median year? Median SAT, uh, <laughs> it varied from year one to year two. Year one, uh, which would fall of 14, uh, it was 1060, 1060. Our retention rate, it's not on this chart because we just became four year in fall of 14. Our retention rate fall to fall for the freshmen was 70%, okay? 70% is roughly the national average. That's not our goal. <laughs> our goal is 75%. Uh, we're not here to be average. Uh, and so the challenge is, how do we get that retention rate higher? But it's 70 percent for fall 14 to fall 15 for the freshmen who came in fall of 14. Mm -hmm. So I have a question. You said, I was going to ask you why you have Hispanics out here just by themselves. Right. And so you're saying that one of them is, is it's your highest growing group of students? Right. We're, we're now and have been for a couple of years. In fact, all four universities in the UH system are Hispanic serving institutions, HSIs. Uh, but right now, approximately a third of all of our undergraduates, a third of all of our undergraduates uh, are Hispanic students. Uh, to qualify as an HSI, it has to be 25% of your undergraduate student body. So, so you're attributing that to now that you're a four-year institution. Is that where more of your no, Hispanic uh, students are coming? I, I think we were doing reasonably well as an upper level, but it has positively impacted this. The other thing is just, as you look at the surrounding school districts, for example, Pasadena ISD is 82% Hispanic. Right. Uh, and with our biggest feeder for community college students being San Jacinto College, uh, based in Pasadena, uh, that's obviously kind of a natural pipeline. So. Okay. All right, great. Thank you very much. Do you have any further questions? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I'd like to call upon President Vic Morgan from UH Victoria, please. Thank you, Chair Mendoza, Regents. Um, I'll be as brief as I can be. Uh, University of Houston, Victoria has a large number, a large percentage of its students in the uh, Southwest Houston area. Uh, we are growing on the campus in virtually every category of enrollment, retention, et cetera. We are not growing in the, in the uh, Sugar Land area. As many of you know, we're transitioning out of Sugar Land. There's been a lot of uncertainty among the students. Most of our transfer students are in the, uh, on the Sugar Land campus coming from the uh, Houston Community College and other community colleges up here. So uh, we're, uh, we're uh, losing ground there because of the uncertainty about where we're going to be. You'll see later today that we're going to try to resolve that problem by uh, moving over into the Katy area 
and we believe we can turn most of these numbers around uh, that are uh, in the, the negative side now. Even the enrollment numbers, we're growing in Victoria, but we're losing ground in, uh, in Sugar Land. And as you uh, may see from some other areas, uh, over the past two years, in Sugar Land, two years ago, we were 75% of the enrollment, U of H was 25. Last year, that turned around and it became 75% UH, 25% oh, wow, uh, Victoria. A lot of that is just the uncertainty of where we're gonna be and where we're going. So we're moving in the right direction. I think when we uh, have facilities in Katy, can uh, carry the UH system name to Katy, uh, I think we'll see these numbers turn around pretty rapidly in terms of the other things that are there. Uh, I can answer questions about any of those that you uh, are concerned about. Again, as I said, most of them deal with the changes that are taking place between Sugar Land and, uh, and Katy at this point. Thank you. Questions? Just a question on some of the, uh, the measures where you, I see that some of yours are slightly different, such as uh, percentage of first generation college graduates, which we don't track on at some of the other campuses. Uh, so is this, these are the ones that you feel that are most important to measure your success or the, these these are numbers that were were determined uh, some time ago about the time we were going from the uh, from the upper level to the the full four-year university we've not looked carefully at these and tried to decide whether there are other measures that we ought to be uh, looking at i would tend to agree with president staples that that the critical issues are getting them in, get it, keeping them, and, uh, and graduating them. Uh, these uh, these uh, first generation uh, college students are based on a self-reported measure. And so you don't know exactly how accurate those are. We ask the students, do they have a member of their family who's been to college? Some of them will say uh, yes if they've been one year. Some will say no unless they have a degree. So the numbers are pretty small in those areas. And consequently, uh, uh, small changes make, uh, make differences in the percentages. For example, uh, the, the numbers uh, here for uh, underrepresented group graduation rate, uh, the first number there is uh, 30 out of 45. The second number is 29 out of 54. Numbers are small, but the percentages change pretty dramatically. Right. Regent McKelvey, I can answer your question about the, the variables. The only consistency here would be the, the four categories, which is national competitiveness, student success, access, community advancement, and um, competitive resources, because those were considered to be for system-wide four things when we did the planning. And then the only consistent measures are in 2A. Those, all of those measures you will find on every single progress card and all compiled together into system card. After that, we allowed each campus to really reflect what our values to them based on what their mission was, and they could populate other measures okay. to give a full picture. Okay. So now that there has been so much changes on, um, on other campuses in terms of downward expansion, and now moving to, to Katy and, and, and so on, other places as well we have gone, I think we might look at these measures again and clean it up and see which ones really make sense and which ones we change and which ones we move to UH system. Okay. Yeah, that would be helpful, especially like in the transition in Victoria, some measures to track how that's going and, and, and especially with the downward expansion in two of our universities, right. just to kind of see how yes. that. Yep. Very good. Okay. Any more questions? Thank you. Thank you. Do you have any more? Dr. Um, okay. That's, that completes the report. Thank you. All Thank you. Thank you very much. And I personally want to thank all of the presidents. I know more, many of the regents come out to your campuses, but personally I want to thank you for how you're always uh, so welcoming when I come to your campuses. So I appreciate that. All righty. If there's no further questions, uh, thank you, Chancellor Couture and our presidents, for your presentations today. This item was for present, uh, presented for information only. It should be noted that an executive session will not be held. Anyone have any further questions? Okay. There being no further business to come before this committee, this meeting is hereby adjourned. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Paula, and thank you, President.